The following is a production of Learfield Sports. The Wisconsin Badgers were better than Minnesota for the most part on Friday night, and then Saturday, dead even. But Wisconsin managed only two points in the six-point Big Ten series. Now it's off to Penn State. I'm Brian Posick, the radio voice for Badger Hockey, and head coach Mike Eves joins us next on the Badger Hockey Digest. Pass out high, Davison won't shoot. Here's Hughes, he will, he scores! Yes! Cameron Hughes has been waiting a long time to light the lamp as a Badger. He finally does on the power play with 1.13 left in the third. Here's Corbin McGuire, right down the middle, right-hander looking, looking, backhand, scores! And a baby, Corbin, all the energy in the world and a pretty good set of hands. Corbin McGuire with a go-ahead goal in the seventh round of the shootout. Don Lucia now counters with Justin Kluse. Kluse backhand, this the man. Badgers win in a shootout. The Badger Hockey Digest is brought to you by Charter Communications. Welcome to U.S. Cellular. My family of four would like to switch to your best plan ever. You know you don't actually need four people to get our best plan pricing. Oh. You can connect anywhere between two and six devices to our 10 gig plan and we'll pay off your old contract. We'll just take the two lines then for a phone and a tablet. So, how long you been married? Switch to our best plan pricing and get our new $100 trading guarantee, U.S. Cellular. Well, it was an entertaining series this past weekend, Wisconsin and Minnesota. I'd say the fans got their money's worth, didn't they? They did. Uh, it's funny, I got an email from uh, a former alumni that said you played great for 118 minutes and 40 seconds or 20 seconds <laughs> yeah. he said you, you take that 100 seconds out of there and it was it was a, a really good weekend for us and very entertaining as you said and could it be any more titting than a, a, a shootout victory on a Saturday night against the Gophers? Uh, it was a lot of fun, and I'm glad we ended up on the good side of the coin for on Saturday because we played very well, and uh, it's good feedback for our kids. gives them energy to come back to work on Monday. Yeah, and minus the 140 seconds on Friday, you played pretty darn well that night too. Yeah, we did. We did a lot of good things, and uh, we played more in the offensive zone, which is what we needed to do. And in that 100 seconds, uh, you know, it was funny, we had an all-staff meeting today and we were talking to with, with the soccer coaches yeah. and they have a young squad as well. And they said the same thing, you know, even, even games last year and now this year when they play their inter-squad games and, and such in their spring season, it's, it's the mistakes by the young people that are huge mm -hmm. and the ball ends up in the back of the net as the puck ended up in our net on, on Friday night. But a lot of good things to build on. We watched video yesterday, the defensemen watched together uh, in the video room and then we had the forwards come in and, you know, three quarters of the video was good stuff. Yeah. The area that we need to improve on is the area that we focused on at last year, at the end of last year with an older team, and that's coming into our zone from a line rush against in defensive zone coverage, and, and it's an area that we will keep pounding with this young group as well. Sure. Mike, you've played in a lot of games, coached a lot of games, watched a lot of games. You've never seen four goals in 140 seconds? or no. Well, actually, 100 seconds? 100 seconds. Never seen that before, I guess. Uh, uh, well, you shared with me at the St. Cloud, yeah, Dean he, Thibodeau, who's our video coordinator, said he saw four goals in 55 seconds. So, I mean, that's, that's <laughs> your head would really be spinning then. So, well, the next time we get two goals scored on really fast, I'm going to call a timeout just to stop the bleeding right there. But never seen that before. Hope to never see it again unless we do it. But very rare that that happens. Uh, uh, and we just move forward from there. Yep. I'm happy that hockey has only one timeout per game. I love basketball, too, but too many timeouts. It's crucial. I mean, one time out, you really have to know, all right, is this the right time or not? Most of the time we see it at the end yeah. of hockey games, but you had to take one there. Well, we did. Uh, sometimes you go over to your assistant coach, you say, what do you think? Should we take one now? There was no need to ask. We needed to, to take it right there. The interesting thing was when we called the timeout, uh, we as a coaching staff, okay, everybody in. Then the older guys took over. We didn't say a word. 
they, they took over and said, hey, let's settle down here. Let's get back to doing what we do. Play the right way is kind of our mantra. And we settled down and got back and, you know, got a goal before that period was over to make it a 5-4 game going in the third. So, yeah, timeouts are very precious in the game of hockey. Yeah, the Gophers ended up winning that game on Friday 7-5 to and then another entertaining game on Saturday too that went down to a shootout. But you grabbed the lead with a minute 13 left. And I know everybody in the house, and it was a, a, a packed house on Saturday night, thought, all right, this is the one the Badgers are going to get. And it was, uh, you know, I was, took a look around. The fans were all on their feet, and uh, we had time to, to draw out and remember, have our guys remember what we wanted to do. And uh, just didn't get it done. A puck went right underneath Grant Bessie's stick. And I thought we played a little tight rather than play our areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe that's something we can work on. But, uh, again, it, you know, it took our breath away. The thing that was unique to watch our young guys was the fact that um, after they scored a tie up in overtime, we didn't shrink like we did against BU. Our, we seemed to really be deflated. We came out with a little bit more energy and gusto and played harder in the overtime, which got us into the shootout. Yep, and Corbin McGuire scored the game winner in the shootout. Also happy to see uh, Cameron Hughes and Ryan Wagner get their first goals as Badgers. Wisconsin's on the road now for a while. We'll tell you about Penn State in just a moment. It's funny how seeing a clearer picture can lead you to see the bigger one. Get the most HD channels and the fastest internet on the most advanced fiber network. Charter Spectrum, where will it take you? Some call it a miracle. Others call it science. But for those who've needed a kidney transplant like Kelly Crager, they simply call it a new lease on life. For nearly five decades, UW Health and the University of Wisconsin have been national leaders in the field of kidney transplant, providing a new life for recipients and assuring a normal life for living donors. Miracle? Science? Maybe it's a little bit of both. UW Health. Remarkable. Well, we're standing inside the main concourse at the Kohl Center, and the Badgers won't be here now for a few more weeks. In fact, only two more home series the rest of this regular season, which is hard to believe. Well, it's gone by quickly, uh, and it hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm, as we talked about yesterday as a team, I'm really glad that uh, we have the schedule we have. We play four away series, two home series, and then we go to the Big Ten tournament in Detroit. Um, this kind of sets us up well for the end of the year because in order for us to extend our season, we need to figure out how to win on the road. Mm -hmm. And so we have these games, these four series on the road, and then going to Detroit for us to extend this, our season, we're going to have to win three games and three nights to get into the tournament. And that's our goal at this point. And we're playing better. We want to be playing even better by, by March in that time period. So having the schedule that we have at this time of year is a good thing for us. Right. While there still may be some issues in the defensive zone that you're trying to correct offensively, it seems like you're coming to life a little bit and the power play's been clicking too. No, I mean, there's, you know, when guys get their first goal, it's a weight off their shoulders. I know for both Cameron and Ryan Wagner, who are used to goal scoring, that it's almost unbelievable that they haven't scored up to this point because of their history. And so that, that's a real good thing for our team. And you include in that the power play. We seem to... Uh, we're doing better things there along with the power play, you know, our penalty killing is getting better. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're getting better and that's the thing that it, that's encouraging for the players and the coaching staff at this time. All right, now it's off to State College to play Penn State, a team that has 13 wins. Right now receiving votes in the national polls, one spot out of the top 20. It's a, a much improved team and it plays in a rink that uh, is supposed to be loud and raucous. Wisconsin was there last year when the students weren't there, their war zone. I'm anxious to see what this atmosphere is going to be like. Well, it, uh, it was pretty uh, electric last year without the students because it, it sold out. I mean, it's tough to get a ticket there, and the, and the students get the, uh, the priority on those tickets. But then when they weren't there, you know, the, the, the people in the town were able to go. So it'll be interesting. I, I, again, great atmosphere for a young team to go out and figure out how to steal a couple ponies going into Penn State. Yep, and they've got some good forwards, too, in Taylor Holstrom. And Casey Bailey, who leads the Big Ten in scoring, this is a team the M.O. is put the puck on the net. They do it all the time. Oh, my gosh. Anytime the opposing goalie touches the puck, whether it's an icing or a stoppage of play, she was saying they put a shot up on the board. So, <laughs> But their M.O. is to shoot the puck. And, and the one thing that's... You know, Guy has done a good job, that's our coach, Guy Gadowski, has done a good job of convincing them when you shoot, 
you have to turn and find the puck as a defensive player. Well, as the shooter, you see the puck first. You have the advantage. So they, they've bought into that wholesale, and, then, and they do a good job at it. All right, good luck. Thanks, Brian. Sure, that's Badgers head coach Mike Eaves. Wisconsin and Penn State face off Friday night at 530. Then a matinee on Saturday at 1 o'clock. Friday's game is on the Big Ten Network. Saturday, it's on the American Sports Network. Check your local listings for the channels. And you can always listen on the Badger Sports Radio Network. For Mike Eaves, I'm Brian Posick. Thanks for watching the Badger Hockey Digest.